This video can be summed up in a nutshell. The Pixel 3a has remained my daily driver pretty much since I got it. But I do think that this phone is for a lot of people out there, pretty much anybody, and we're going to explain why in this video. It's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody? And it's time to ask the question, who is the Pixel 3a for? If you'll allow me to just point out real quick at the beginning of this video that that tagline that Mr. Mobile used in his thumbnail, well, he asked me if he could use it because I'm the one who put that in a tweet earlier on uh, and said that this phone is a palate cleanser. Bottom line, he and I, we both agree. This phone is for us smartphone wary reviewers. The Pixel 3 is a reminder to all smartphone users that in order to have a good time with the daily device, it doesn't have to try so hard to be everything to everyone. If you're looking at your current smartphone right now and thinking, man, I would have been happy with less features on this thing if it meant I paid less, then you need to give this phone some consideration. Don't get me wrong, there are so many great things going on in smartphone tech right now, from battery life to gaming performance, cameras, uh, there's just a lot to be happy about. But one reason why the Pixel 3a keeps returning to my pocket is because I realized after using this phone that in my non-reviewing daily life, I actually don't need that much. But the phone was still able to capture my imagination by being a great tool for a traveler like myself. I was using the Pixel 3a and its eSIM on Google Fi during a three-week trip in Asia where I went to Tokyo, Japan and various parts of the Philippines, and then Tokyo again. Google Fi pretty much works on any smartphone right now, but at least with the Pixels and with the Pixel 3a in my hand, I didn't have to put in a physical SIM. I just use the eSIM and get it connected when I'm on a Wi-Fi network. After that, I'm good to go. And Google Fi is also a great feature for any travelers out there who are looking to keep high-speed internet. I was able to have 4G LTE no matter where I was during my trip, and it came in really handy, especially in Batangas in the Philippines. Even if I inevitably paid extra for all of the data that I was using, and I used a lot, having this as a backup proved to be invaluable abroad. You'll notice that I went for the Pixel 3a, not the 3 axle or 3a XL, uh, because I wanted a smaller phone this time. Since I started working on my channel full time, I always go with the larger phones like the iPhone XS Max, the Galaxy S10 Plus, uh, and it's not always my choice, but this time around it was, and I wanted to go for the smaller device for ease of use. It is so great to use a smaller phone for a change. Being able to comfortably reach all the corners of the phone without fear of it slipping about, maybe I'm multitasking with a cup of tea in one hand and this phone in the other, or even just swiping with reckless abandoned doing things like typing to uh, my text messages or to any messengers. Uh, honestly, this is all stuff that we take for granted on bigger phones. Obviously, a smaller phone means that there are quite a few compromises, but being able to use a phone like this in virtually any situation, well, that is just a huge plus. Regardless of its size, a $400 phone is not without its compromises, which means that the Pixel 3a is not really for media junkies. I did get the smaller 3a for the exact reason I alluded to, minimalism. But that also means a smaller screen, less display, more bezels. And the screen isn't bad in terms of general quality, as the AMOLED display is great for its always-on capabilities and is still great at rendering colors. But I don't blame anybody for wanting a bigger screen for better viewing experiences. And I have seen some tweets out there where you're just complaining about bezels in general. But there's a very good reason for those areas above and below the screen, and it has to do with the speakers. Honestly, I was really surprised with how big the sound was for a phone this small. Quick anecdote, I actually used this phone while in London for a previous trip. I know this was a while ago, but I literally watched the finale of Game of Thrones using this phone, and I was really impressed at how good the audio was coming from these speakers. Audio is rich, full, booming, even if the finale of the show wasn't. And leave it to a mid-range device to bring back features that people think should be on flagships. I'm talking, of course, about the headphone jack. But now we're getting into some of the performance aspects, and no, this phone is not necessarily for gamers. Daily performance in the stock Android system you get here using the Pixel Launcher is perfectly fine. You'll be able to get a lot of tasks done, and work is going to be not too hard to do on a phone like this. However, once you start to load up some really intensive games, that's when you start to notice that there is a bit of lag, especially when you're trying to boot up those games. You can still play all the games in the Play Store. It just won't be the smoothest, or rather the snappiest experience. And all the other specifications mean that this might not be for those who are spec hungry. There's only four gigabytes of RAM in this phone, and I want to mention that while multitasking is still possible with that amount, some applications will simply die in the background. I've had YouTube and music applications playing in the background that just die once I open up other things like maps. The other thing too is that I'm on the Android Q beta, and while it has for the most part been a stable experience, obviously there are some kinks to be worked out. So my experience might be a little bit different compared to most people who haven't used the beta of Android Q just 
So we're back to the theme of minimalism as we say that this phone is not necessarily for really serious shutter bugs or photographers. With one lens on the back and one lens on the front, it should be no surprise that the Pixel is lacking in options for photographers. We've seen some phones get crazy with the amount of lenses. We've seen up to, what, eight now? And unlike some flagship phones, the Pixel 3a doesn't have any manual modes for those single lenses. So the camera on the Pixel 3a is one that you take with you when you just want to hit the shutter and move on. But it's at that point that you realize this is a Pixel and it's an affordable Pixel at that. Having this phone in my pocket during my trip to the Philippines and in Tokyo, uh, I was finding myself very appreciative that this was the camera that I would have on me at most times. So it comes as no surprise that at $400, you're basically paying for the camera here. And for most people, that's gonna be just fine. This is a reliable stills camera with Google Photos backing up high quality versions of every shot for free. I even appreciated the photos assistant making some highly stylized versions of the portraits that I would be taking a lot while on the beaches or while in Tokyo. And of course, those would be pictures of the girlfriend, Miss Issa Does Tech. And then selfie takers that just want a detailed self-portrait will be happy to know that the front-facing camera splits the difference between the two that were found on the Pixel 3 XL. And then for the vloggers out there, the Pixel still captures some pretty smooth footage thanks to software stabilization, but I wouldn't really rely on this phone for low light videos. Again, the whole idea of ease of use comes back here as you're just firing up the camera and you're taking shots or you're taking videos. And that also means that it's easy to post some good looking stuff on social media. So this one is also for social media junkies as well. So all of that is being done via the storied processing power of the Pixel, algorithmic photography as they call it. Now there is one thing to remember though, while you are going to be getting some really great shots with this, you might be waiting for a little bit because especially if you're taking a bunch of photos at once, the phone will take a little bit of time to process all of them and you might not see them in Google Photos or in the gallery right away. Uh, now, one thing I will say is while there are people out there who might get miffed by that delay, just remember you are getting those shots and they are turning out pretty incredible. All right, before we finish this off, I do wanna give one quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Rhino Shield. Even if the Pixel 3a is one of the easier phones to replace thanks to its lower price point, you might still wanna protect your investment. I've actually really enjoyed using a bumper case from Rhino Shield during daily usage. It gives the phone a little bit of a lip and thus a little bit more protection, and it still lets the white color show off. There are also full cases, and there are some advantages to using those, including a lens attachment that allows you to put on some extra lenses and get even more out of that singular rear lens. For now, you can check out the Rhino Shield cases by heading down to the description and using the provided links. Thanks again to Rhino Shield for hooking it up with some Pixel 3a protection and for sponsoring this video. So by now, I think it's a given that the Pixel 3a is 2019's disruptor. Uh, Google made a splash at I.O. with this phone's announcement, making it clear to many people, including myself, that a great smartphone experience doesn't necessarily require the latest specs or the biggest price. And probably my favorite part about this phone is that the affordability, the price point, allows for this to be a great first step for anybody out there looking for a pure Android experience and to have what is basically considered one of the best cameras in Android today, the Pixel camera. And that's why the Pixel 3a at $400 is a phone made for anyone. First timers, the frugal, the minimalist, the Android purist, honestly, everyone can find something to like about this phone. And that's probably why we're so flabbergasted by the Pixel 3a and have found it pretty tough to put it down. Google reminded us that sometimes by minimizing what we use, we could maximize our experience. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review of the Pixel 3a in which I ask, who is this for? Uh, you can look forward to even more from the Pixel 3a. I will be looking through those Rhino Shield cases one more time, mainly because of that lens attachment that you can put on the main cases. That way you can put some awesome lenses on there and get even more out of the single lens on the back. So look forward to that. And once again, thank you to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Drop some likes on these videos and then get to the comments section so that you can have a great discussion about why the Pixel 3a just might be for, well, everyone. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to even more here on JV. Until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.